Registered Phenomena Code 505 Object Class Beta Yellow Hazard Types Sapient Hazard Ideological Hazard Transmutation Hazard Containment Protocols RPC-505 is to be contained in a standard humanoid chamber at Site-004 and be allowed access to various toys and games as a reward for good behavior. Due to the nature of RPC-505, all personnel must maintain a calm demeanor when interacting with it. Under no circumstances should RPC-505-1 be separated from RPC-505, unless by RPC-505's own will. All personnel must maintain the narrative that RPC-505-1 is sapient and alive while interacting with RPC-505. All instances of RPC-505-2 are to be contained within separate standard humanoid chambers at Site-004, away from RPC-505's own containment chamber. All instances of RPC-505-2 are allowed standard privileges provided continue positive cooperation. The instance that is designated RPC-505-2A is to be provided with a timetable detailing time periods at which they are authorized to spend with RPC-505. Said timetable must be scheduled and authorized by the head of RPC-505's research, at the beginning of every month. All interactions between RPC-505 and RPC-505-2A will be supervised by no less than one guard. RPC-505 is a Caucasian male of approximately six years of age and roughly 114 cm in height, formerly known as Scott Lewis. RPC-505 shows signs of generalized anxiety disorder, and has shown reluctance in socially interacting with other personnel. Generalized Anxiety Disorder GAD, is an anxiety disorder characterized by excessive, uncontrollable, and often irrational worry about events or activities. RPC-505-1 is a sock puppet that RPC-505 keeps on its left hand at most times. Referred to as Benny by RPC-505. Save for showering, as RPC-505 expresses fear that RPC-505-1 getting wet. Hence, it is kept in a box during this time. RPC-505-1 shows no anomalous traits, and is believed to be a coping mechanism created by RPC-505. RPC-505's anomalous effects occur whenever someone disagrees with RPC-505 that RPC-505-1 is not real in any way or form. A list of symptoms during the process has been documented below. If any person attempts to forcefully remove RPC-505-1 from RPC-505, they will immediately become an instance of RPC-505-2. Stage 1 Subjects will begin experiencing severe headaches and proceed to hear a voice talking to them. The voice is described by many instances as being high-pitched and at random moments going into long fits of rage over the subject's falsified view of RPC-505-1. Stage 2 After 72 hours, subjects will start suffering from the first physical change to their body, starting with their eyes. The eyes will begin to increase in size causing damage to the ocular sockets and all organic material of the eye will be replaced with a white plastic shell containing a black plastic disc. Despite the severe damage to ocular function this would cause, all subjects retain their sense of sight, and while they are affected by the pain that this would cause, they have not held RPC-505 or RPC-505-1 as being responsible for this despite attempts to convince them otherwise. RPC-505 has never reacted to this with fear for unknown reasons. Stage 3 Subjects will apologize for any problems that they might have caused RPC-505 regarding their disbelief for RPC-505-1's existence, and will make attempts to become RPC-505's friend. However, subjects maintain their sense of self-preservation in this stage and will not intentionally engage in self-harm. Stage 4 Subjects that are in proximity with RPC-505-1 
will be able to hear RPC-505-1 talking to them, and will come under complete belief that RPC-505-1 is in fact a sapient entity that they can converse with. RPC-505-2A is an instance of RPC-505-2 that is RPC-505's mother. RPC-505-2A displays no different properties from other RPC-505-2 instances, but RPC-505 is shown to prefer being in their company in comparison to all other instances. Addendum 505-1 Discovery Log RPC-505 was discovered on February 1, 2019, during an investigation sweep of the police department in Southampton, England. According to the police report, a woman, Mary Lewis, designated POI-1817, was discovered by police officers as an RPC-505-2 instance. A search of Mary Lewis's home discovered RPC-505 to have been playing with RPC-505-1. RPC-505 was briefly taken into custody and was to be sent to foster care. However, during the process, a police officer had taken RPC-505-1 from RPC-505, which immediately turned them into an RPC-505-2 instance. An authority operative was immediately sent to retrieve RPC-505 and RPC-505-1, while RPC-505-2 and RPC-505-2A had already been placed in authority custody. Addendum 505-2 Interview Log Interviewed RPC-505 Interviewer Researcher Mark Woodford Forward Begin Log Hello, my name is Mark Woodford. Can you please tell us your name? Scott L -L Lewis RPC-505 sniffles and looks down at the floor. I understand you might be scared, Scott. However, we just want to ask you a few questions. Can you do that for me? RPC-505 nods. Good. Now my first question. Can you tell us about your life at home? M well I'm happy at home and, and my mom… Where's my mom? RPC-505 begins panicking. It's okay, Scott. She's doing fine right now. Can… Can I see her? I'm afraid not right now. We need to run some tests and then depending on what my supervisor says, we'll let you talk with her." RPC-505 begins to shed a few tears. Oh, okay. Good. Anyway, can you tell us about your… abilities? A abilities Have you seen the people with the, um, googly eyes? Y yeah Can you explain why they're like that? I… I don't know. But, but, when she was like that, she wasn't mean to me anymore. She was nice to me and wanted to play with me. Can you describe how she was mean to you? M mom would never let me eat much. She'd always hit me. Can you tell me why you would want to see her again if she was so mean to you? M well, I started when I told her about my friend. Your friend? Y yeah, Benny. RPC-505 pulls up his left hand and smiles at RPC-505-1. So this is Benny. RPC-505 nods. Can you tell me about how you two met? M well, at first I didn't really have any friends. Everyone always laughed or avoided me, so I just wished for one friend. RPC-505 tears up. I'm sorry to hear. I promise to make sure that doesn't happen here. T thank you. So how did you meet Benny? Well, I was putting stuff together for someone to talk with, and then Benny started talking to me. What did Benny say to you? He asked me where he was, and I told him my house. I asked who he was, and he said that he didn't have a name, so I called him Benny, and he loved the name. Were you scared of him? I was at first, but then I spoke to him more and we became friends. I was happy to have my first best friend. Can you tell me what Benny is like? Benny is funny and nice to me. He always tells me about how he's feeling, and I like to play different games with him. Can you tell me what games you two play? 
I'd usually just draw pictures and show them to him, because he doesn't have hands. That makes sense. What else do you do with Benny? I like to read him stories. Sometimes he makes some up for me so that I can sleep. Any stories in particular that he tells you? All of his stories are nice. Has Benny ever said anything weird to you? N no RPC-505 looks at RPC-505-1 confused. So how is Benny right now? What do you mean? He's sleeping. Right, sorry, I forgot. Are there any more questions? I I'm hungry. That will be all my questions for today. Thank you, Scott. If you go outside, there should be someone to escort you to the cafeteria. M when am I going home? I'm afraid you'll be living here from now on, Scott. However, I promise that your mum is here with you, and we'll make sure that you and Benny are looked after. Oh, okay then. End log. Addendum 505-3 Message from TOAS Psychology Department The Office of Analysis and Science From Senior Researcher Wilson It is of current belief by the Psychology Department and myself that after interviewing and testing RPC-505, that RPC-505-1 is not the cause for subjects transforming into RPC-505-2. I theorize that RPC-505 may be, in fact, be an unconscious reality bender. My reason for this being that after much and careful observation from our research team, we find little evidence to support that RPC-505-1 is, in fact, a belief-powered entity. First thing I found is that RPC-505-1 itself displays no sort of ACS level. When RPC-505 was, we quickly took RPC-505-1 and administered an AECR to it. Anderson Eckhart Coherency Reader is a machine capable of automatically producing a rough estimate for a coherency level of a given area. I understand that using the AECR machine was incredibly expensive and would have been better used on a different anomaly. However, the higher-ups were also curious as to whether or not RPC-505 might be an unconscious reality bender. I found out that RPC-505-1 had an exact ACS level of 4 meaning that it's at baseline level coherency, which is the same level for everything that is currently explainable by modern science. I do, however, believe that we should keep RPC-505 under the illusion that RPC-505-1 is real, as a way to control its powers. While a cognitive compliance harness would also be efficient, I believe that it's a more cost and reliable method to keep RPC-505 constantly in belief that RPC-505-1 is in fact alive. Addendum 505-4 Report Log Senior Researcher Wilson was found to have died during a containment breach that occurred. An autopsy was performed on Wilson's corpse, with evidence pointing towards a heart attack for witnessing RPC. A subsequent investigation revealed that the senior researcher had choked on an unknown plastic substance.